out. Today on Life Church Kids, it is an outer. Are you ready? Remember, we're learning things about what Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount. And some of those lessons that he taught were a little hard to handle, but great lessons to learn. And so we're trusting that Jesus knew what he was talking about. And every time, it just works out when we trust him. But listen, today's ouch is on forgiving other people when they do something wrong to you. Man, it's easy to hold on to our hurt, but God calls us to let it go. And if Jesus can let go of all the hurt we do to him, we can definitely let go of the hurt that others do to us. This is going to be an outcher today, but I want you to hang in there. Watch all the way through. Let's check in with Susie Patuzzi now and find out what's going on with her today. Hey, everybody. It's me again. It's Susie Patuzzi. But don't! Ugh, Susie Patuzzi, I just totally just blew my sunglasses off. Do you see my new glasses? Do you like them? They're like cacti. Yeah, Mommy told me that because there's more than one, they're called cacti. So I learned that. It's really cool. And I have my favorite lollipop today. I'm very excited to eat it, although I think it's going to take a long time. Anywho, I wanted to talk to you more about our bunny barrels and the missionaries and what we're doing for the missionaries with our bunny barrel. But I'm supposed to tell you too, I know Bobby, to remind everybody that it's Father's Day today. So I made a picture for my dad because we're going to spend some time together, just me and him, and it's going to be super special. And my rainbow was backwards. That's super sad. Anywho, so it's Father's Day today, so maybe you can make a picture for, for someone in your house or your life and be fun. Because I bet you're really a good artist. I'm sure of it. Anywho, so I wanted to talk about the bunny barrels. Look at, look at how much I got. I added some more change and then I got a dollar. Because if you remember last time, Mommy told me I could do more chores. And I did. And she gave me a whole bunch of dollars. And so I put half of it in there. So she gave me two. I put one in, in my bunny barrel because I really want to help the missionaries a lot. I'm super excited. Hey, why don't you go get yours? I want to see like what yours looks like. I'll wait. Oh, you're back. That was really fast. Oh, well, it's okay if you don't have, like, a bunch of money in your barrel yet because it can take, there's still lots of time to go ahead and do that, but then you can bring it to church. Yeah, like, when you come to Life Church, you can just bring it and give it to your person, and they'll totally put it in the big barrel. Yeah, there's a bigger one that it goes inside. It's very cool. Oh, and if you don't have one, yes, Bobby, I remembered. My mommy told me to remind you that if you don't have one and you go to church, that you can just ask your pastor and they have some. So you can just ask for it and they'll give it to you because they're really cool. And look, you can see like the money inside. So I'm super excited to help the missionaries because the missionaries that are going to help the people and then when they help the people, they're going to tell them about Jesus. Jesus is my best friend. Yep. Are you best friends with Jesus too? Because he has a lot of best friends. Like a lot. A lot. So anywho, that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. And I wanted to see your barrel. So if you don't have one, it's okay. Just remember. Achoo! Ugh. Sorry. Allergies. Just remember that you can ask for it when you go to Life Church. And they'll totally give you one. See how simple? Alright guys. I, I I know Bobby, so I'm going to have to go, but you're still my best friends, and I still think you're really, really cool. All right, I got to go now. You go first. No, you go. Okay, all right. Bye. Good morning, boys and girls. It's Pastor Jamie. You're back for our next week of Ouch. We're so excited to have you. California. Oh! Hey. <laughs> that was an extreme entrance, Sadie. Hey, um, I heard something the news it's that fedex and the ups company is like combining you're kidding no i'm not it's 
they're making a company, and do you know what it's called? What? Fed up. <laughs> oh my goodness, did you just tell me a dad joke? I don't know. Why yes. did you tell me a dad joke? I don't know, maybe because it's Father's Day. <laughs> well, happy Father's Day to all the dads and father figures out there. We're so glad that you're joining us this morning. Um, well, hey, Sadie. Why did the invisible man not take the new job? I don't know. He couldn't see himself doing it. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, He's invisible. He couldn't see himself. <laughs> That's, That's right. Funny. Hey, before we go, you got one more for me? Yep. Wait. Yeah. Forgot it for <laughs> a second. Hey, what, what do you call a bear without teeth? What? A gummy bear. <laughs> That's extremely funny. Uh, and you know what else is pretty extreme? What? Our next segment. Band-Aid and Grand-Aid? That's right. Oh, so cool. Bye. Thanks, bros and brosettes, for that totally awesome welcome. I'm Band-Aid, and this is my show, Ouch. Every week, I spend hours hunting for the best pet fail videos out there. It took me forever to find this week's video, and I'm not kitten around. Haha, <laughs> get it? Kitten around? Like kidding? Never mind. Roll the video. Man, those pets were treating the other pets pretty harshly. Almost as harsh as my breath was after I ate that tuna yesterday. Whoa! Anyway, I bet those animals were mad and wanted to get some revenge on those other pets. And I don't blame them. I had a dude pull a prank on me yesterday, and I'm going to get me some revenge today. I thought I would bring you guys along so you could watch. Let's go do this. All right, so here's the plan. The dude that pulled the prank on me, his name is Bruce Knee. And I know that he comes to this park every day at 2 p.m. to walk his pet llama. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide behind this tree and I'm gonna fill my hand full of this whipped cream. Man, this is gonna be sweet revenge and hilarious. Man, this looks good. This looks real good. Ma'am, all right, I gotta get some more whipped cream. I'll be right back. Okay, it's been a while, but he's gotta be coming soon. Oh, wait a minute. I think I see somebody coming now. I better hide. Oh yeah, this is gonna be so good. Shh, here we go. One, two, Three, three. Yeah, boy! Man, revenge is so sweet. Maybe next time you won't pull price on people now, will you, boy? <gasps> Gran! Van? Gran! Is there an echo in here? Why did you do this? Gran! I'm so sorry. I didn't know it was you. Please don't ground me. Please don't spank me. Please don't make me shave your pet iguana. Who are you trying to get revenge on? It was Bruce Knee. He pulled a prank on me, and I just wanted to get even with him. I'm so sorry, Gran. It's okay, honey, but you know what the Bible says about revenge, right? What does it say? It says revenge makes everything worse. Even if you think that it's going to make you feel better, it usually doesn't, and it hurts somebody, and you feel terrible afterwards. I do feel terrible. Well, in the Bible, Joseph had a chance to get revenge on his brothers. Do you want to hear how that story goes? Yeah, totally. Okay, but first, let's get some ice cream. You want to buy me ice cream? You're such a sweet granny. No, you're buying me ice cream to go with all this whipped cream on my face. Sorry, granny. Wow, sometimes people can really hurt us, right? 
and sometimes we can hurt other people. But when someone hurts us, maybe they lie about us, talk behind our back, steal our stuff, even hurt us physically, maybe make jokes about us. All those things can cause really big hurt inside of our hearts. We can think about how they deserve to pay. And guys, I'm all about justice, okay? But holding a grudge doesn't make things better. What Jesus says here is he says, go and make things right when somebody has a problem with you or you have a problem with someone else. Go and make things right. Man, holding a grudge, it's just not a good idea. And so the more you let go of it, the freer you can be. Today's what's up is don't hold on to grudges, make things right. Making things right doesn't mean that you cause pain back. It means that you extend grace and forgiveness to someone else and hope the very best for them. So let me hear you say today's what's up as loud as you can. Let everyone hear it in your neighborhood. Are you ready? Don't hold on to grudges, make things right. Guys, that's awesome. As loud as you say it is as real as it needs to be in your heart. I feel like there's a Bible story that Pastor Tina has for us on this. Hey guys, it's Pastor Tina. I am so excited to be with you today. It's been a minute since I've gotten to sit with you and just kind of chit chat. Well, here I am today and we get to talk about one of my favorite topics of all time together. That's right, ta-da, the Bible. Yep. The Bible, 66 books inspired by the Holy Spirit, God's word sent to teach us, to correct us, to change us, and make us to be more like Jesus. I brought my favorite one today. Ta-da! It's purpley blue with stars on it. I love this Bible so much. Hey, what does your Bible look like? Sweet. Well, hey. If you don't have it with you right now, it's totally okay. I'm going to tell you the scriptures that we're in so that you can read this story again later or have a grown-up read it to you, okay? We are going to be in the book of Genesis. Now help me out. Is Genesis at the end of the Bible? Is it in the middle of the Bible? Or is it at the beginning of the Bible? You are exactly right. It is the beginning of the Bible. As a matter of fact, Genesis is the very first book of the Bible. And the word Genesis, are you ready for it? The word Genesis means beginning, right? God is so smart. He knows exactly what he's doing, doesn't he? All right, well, let's get into our story. We are going to be in chapters 37 through 45. You guys, that's a lot of words. So I'm not gonna read it to you today, but we're gonna talk about the story and then you can read it later, okay? All right, here we go. Oh, and I'm gonna teach in costume. Does anyone else like to play dress up? Ah, so much fun, right? Okay, here we go. All right, we're gonna talk about the life of Joseph. You might remember Joseph, Pastor Nathan talked about him a couple weeks ago. And we are going to focus a little bit on Joseph's life but more about kind of the end of Joseph's story a little bit. So, Joseph was given a coat of many colors by his dad. All right, bonus points if you can tell me the name of Joseph's dad. Ready? Three, two, one. That's right, it was Jacob. Yeah, that's pretty cool. By the way, that reminds me, Today is Father's Day. I don't know who you're celebrating today. If it's grandpa, dad, an uncle, a good friend, make sure you tell them Happy Father's Day and give them lots of special attention. Maybe draw them a picture or something. Anyway, so Joseph was Jacob's favorite son. Most parents don't have favorite sons or daughters. Parents usually just love all of their kids the same amount. Well. The problem was Jacob, he treated Joseph extra special and gave Joseph the fancy, fancy coat of many colors. Now this is a big deal because back then, coats of many colors 
were really expensive. If you were going to get colors like red and blue and purple, it was going to cost a lot of extra money. Well, so Joseph got this coat from his dad, Jacob, and he wore it around. And then Joseph would also talk about how he had these dreams and his brothers were going to bow down to him. And he had like 11 brothers, 10 were older and pretty mad, right? They did not like hearing about how great Joseph thought he was and they were angry. And they decided they were going to plot on how to get rid of Joseph. And they decide we're going to kill him. Uh, that's crazy, but that's what they decided. So when Joseph showed up at the field, they attacked him and then they took him and they threw him down into the well. They were going to leave Joseph there to die. But then one of them had an idea. Ding! And the idea was, if we sell him to slave traders, we can get money and get rid of Joseph. It's a win-win. It's not a win-win, but that's what they decided to do. So they sold Joseph to slave traders, and he was taken off into Egypt to be a slave. You guys, this was horrible. His own brothers did this to him. Ugh. I mean, I know brothers and sisters sometimes, you know, might argue over who ate the last cookie or something, but this is not okay. So the slave traders took Joseph all the way to the country of Egypt. And there in Egypt, he was sold as a slave to Potiphar. That's right. He was sold to the house of Potiphar. And you may remember how that story went. Potiphar's wife decided to lie and tell Potiphar that Joseph attacked her. Well, as you can imagine, Potiphar was really mad. So Joseph, even though he didn't do it, he was a completely innocent man. He got thrown into jail. That's right, completely innocent, did nothing wrong. He was thrown into a well, he was sold to slave traders, he was sold as a slave to Potiphar, and now he's in the dungeon, he's in prison. <sighs> you guys, all of this happened because of his brothers. Can you imagine how angry Joseph might have been feeling? Mm. Well, then, if you remember right, Pharaoh had some dreams and Joseph was able to interpret the dreams for Pharaoh and help him out. And Pharaoh was so happy with Joseph's help that he decided to make Joseph number two in Egypt. That's right. Pharaoh was the most powerful person in Egypt. And he decided that he was going to have Joseph be the second most powerful person in Egypt. That's right. So, strange turn of events happen next. A famine hits the land. Now, thanks to Joseph being so smart, Egypt had enough food saved away for the famine. A famine is when there's not enough food to eat and everyone's hungry, just so you know. But Joseph had prepared Egypt for the famine and they had food stored away. Well, Joseph's brothers were also affected by the famine and they didn't have enough food to feed their family. And so Jacob sent Joseph's brothers to Egypt to go ask for help and food. They had no idea they were gonna walk in and have to deal with Joseph. They didn't know what happened to Joseph. They assumed he was off as a slave somewhere or maybe even dead. So if you can imagine Joseph's surprise when they come walking into the room. Oh, Joseph had a tough decision to make. You see, I'm sure he remembered how evil and mean his brothers were to him. The names they called him, how they threw him in the well. 
Had Joseph had enough power, he could have had them killed right there on the spot. He could have sold them into slavery just like they did to him. But that's not what he did. Joseph told all of the attendants in the room to get out. He said, all of you, out! Leave me alone with these men. They were worried. Was this leader really mad? What was going to happen? And so after everyone left, Joseph called the brothers near to him and he says, Psst, it's me, Joseph, the one you sold into slavery. Oh, can you imagine his brothers? I bet they were just like, oh, we're in so much trouble. And they were expecting to be punished. They deserved to be punished for what they did to Joseph. They imagined they were about to be killed or thrown into jail. But instead, they found out they were forgiven. You see, Joseph forgave his brothers for every single thing that they did to him. Do you think that was easy for Joseph? Oh my goodness, no. That had to be really hard when he remembered how mean they were. But he decided to forgive them. He remembered all of the pain they caused and how he was in prison because of them. And they deserved to be punished. But he didn't give them what they deserved. He forgave them. You're going to learn in your lesson today how to forgive like Joseph. You see, sometimes people make us mad. And we might even feel like they deserve to be punished. But that's not like God. That's not God's way. You're going to learn how to forgive people and not hold a grudge. Because the truth is, God has forgiven us of a whole lot. And so it's on us now to forgive others. I think we can do that with God's help, don't you think? I can't wait to learn more about this today. You guys, I've had so much fun playing dress up and talking about my favorite book with you. And I can't wait to see you again soon. All right, remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Bye, guys. Howdy, everybody. Yes, it's me, your old buckaroo, boo-boo. Buckaroo, who, who am I kidding? Yes, it's me, boo-boo. And if you're wondering why I'm dressed in this ridiculous outfit in the noises office, it's because it was cowboy day in our class and I did not want to participate because I do not be like close to so many cactuses or cacti wherever you're from and so I told my teacher I did not want to do it so she sat me down at my desk with a book to read she did not inform me that it was a pop-up book you do not know pain until a paper unicorn pops out of a pop-up book and pokes you in the eye those things should come with warning labels and eye protection anyway I've been sitting here all morning waiting on Noyce Higginbottom. Oh yes, I'm fine Noyce Higginbottom. Yeah, don't worry. You just focus on the kindergarten with Sunboy. Yeah, my suffering is not important. It's not like he'll grow out of it or anything. As per usual, I've been going over power voices in my head the past the time. You want to hear today's power voice? Give me a big yeehaw! Actually, don't do that. I, I, no, that hurts my ears. And today's power voice says, You have heard that if you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. Matthew 5, 21 and 22. That's a good power voice. It is, it is. Now, girls, girls, I need your help. I need all the girls to stand up and say the power voice with me, boo boo on the count of three. Don't be embarrassed about standing up. You can't look more ridiculous than I do right now. Well, maybe you do. I don't know how your mother dresses you. Anyway, stand up, girls, and say the power voice with me on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. You have heard that if you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are even angry with someone, 
you are subject to judgment. Matthew 5, 21 and 22. Good job, girls. Good job. Sit down, sit down. See, boys, it's easy. Boys, I know you can do it. So I need all the boys to stand up and say the power voice with me on the count of three. Goyle, sit down. Your turn's done. Goodness. Okay, boys, stand up. Stand up and say the power voice with me. Boo boo on three. Here we go. One, two, three. You have heard that if you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. Matthew 5, 21 and 22. You know what? Not bad. Not bad. You did good. Sit down. Sit down. Boys and girls, I feel bad. I feel bad because I've had anger in my heart. Anger about Cowboy Day. Anger about pop-up books. Anger at my teacher for giving me the pop-up book and not warning me about the unicorn. And angry at Noyce Higginbottom. You know, she can't help it. She's doing her job. And the Bible says that if you keep anger in your heart, well, if you stay mad at somebody and you don't forgive them, that's, that's as bad as murdering them. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. Oh, that's rough. Well, boys and girls, I'm, I'm sorry for being such a bad example. How about everybody, boys and girls, you know, stand up and say the power voice with me, Boo Boo, on the count of three. Okay, here we go. One, two, oh my eye hoits. Three. You have heard that if you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. Matthew 5. 21 and 22. Great job, everyone. Great job. You can have a seat. Oh, goodness. I've been sitting here forever. What? It's my toy? Thank you, Noise Higginbottom. I've been here for ages. What do you mean I gotta keep the hat on? This place is just silly. I'll see you later, boys and girls. My name's Boo Boo. Stay safe out there. Oh, I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. Wow, what a crazy thing to be poked in the eye by a pop-up book. I mean, you really got to be careful. Hey, but I loved what Pastor Tina shared about Joseph and about how he forgave, even though he didn't have to. His brothers deserved all of what was coming to them. But instead of treating them that way, he treated them with love, care, and complete forgiveness. What an awesome story. Hey, today I wanna to introduce you to today's guest for our call to action. He's our pastor from our Fishers campus, Pastor Chip Burdick, and we are so glad that he is coming and speaking to us. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Pastor Chip, and we, I'm here to teach you your next ouch statement that Jesus made. Did you know in the Bible that Jesus said anger is murder? Whoa, that's intense. Has anyone done anything to you to make you angry before? Has your brother or sister done something to you that's made you angry? What is it? Oh, wow. Have your friends ever done anything that's upset you and made you angry? What happened? Oh, I'm so sorry that that happened to you. How about your parents? Have your parents ever done anything that's made you upset because they said you couldn't watch that movie or you couldn't go to that sleepover? Did that make you upset and angry at them? Man, now that I think of it, there's a lot of things that can make us angry, isn't there? And that's what's so important about the lesson that we're talking about today, about this ouch statement that Jesus made in the Bible about um, whenever we are angry, it's like murder. Wait, what, what's that concerned look on your face? Oh, I get it. Because a minute ago, whenever I said that Jesus said that anger is like murder, you're thinking to yourself, but wait a minute, I'm not a murderer. It's, it's, Chip, is that like, like, is me being upset at somebody like me wanting to, to kill them? No, that's not what Jesus is saying here at all. 
What Jesus is saying is that we need to be aware of our feelings and our emotions because we are all going to get hurt because people will hurt us. And what Jesus wants to do is he wants to guard your emotions and he wants you to understand that um, you can't hold on to being angry at somebody. And that if you don't um, forgive them, that it can make you, well, I have an illustration to show you. Um, I have this apple here and I love apples. Do you love apples? Would you like a bite? I know it's a little silly. You can't eat it through the screen, but I'm going to take a bite. Mmm. I love apples. They're so sweet and delicious. And, but what happens to this apple if all of a sudden I take this salt right here and I just dump it all over this apple? That's a lot of salt, isn't it? And let's pretend like that salt is our anger, that we're upset at somebody, our brother or our sister or um, our friends or our mom and dad. And now I go to take a bite of this apple. Oh, man, that is bitter. Woo! That's going to take a little while to get out of my mouth. Don't try that at home. That is nasty. And that's exactly what happens to our hearts if we hold bitterness inside of us. But see, the, the Bible says that we need to forgive others because God has forgiven us. And, you know, the thing about apples is, is they're supposed to be sweet and tasty. And our hearts are supposed to be full of joy and happiness. So here's the thing. Anger isn't a sin. It's holding on to anger that makes it a sin. Because here's the thing. God has given us anger because it's an emotion. It's an emotion just like being happy is an emotion. Have you been happy lately? Oh, that's so exciting. Have you been sad lately? Well, sin is an emotion just like happiness is an emotion. And so it's what we do with the anger that we have. And we need to give it over to God so that we don't hold it in our hearts and we don't become bitter. Because here's what can happen to us. All of a sudden, this is what our hearts can look like. If we let bitterness eat away at our hearts. And we don't want to do that. We want to forgive others just as God has forgiven us. So I have a question for you. Is there someone that you need to forgive today? Is there someone that has made you angry and you've been holding on to it? It's like, have you ever tried to carry so many things that you just, you can't take one more thing? And God's saying, will you just let go of it all so you won't be bitter in your heart and so your heart won't look like this? Because I want your heart to look like this. I want it to be happy and full of joy. So can we go to Jesus and just ask him right now, if we have any unforgiveness in our hearts, to release that, to give it over to him? Let's do that together. Jesus, Father, we thank you. We thank you for every boy and girl that is watching this message. Lord, I pray that if there is any anger in their hearts, that they would release it so that they would remain sweet. Lord, I pray that they would release it if it's one from their brother or their sister or their friends or their mother or their father or even their enemy, Lord. I pray instead of bitterness that they would experience joy and peace and love. And everyone said, Amen. What's up? So tell me, who did we learn about in our Bible story today? This is a hint. You got it? It was Joseph. Good job. When Joseph was number two in Egypt and his brothers came to him begging for food, what did Joseph do? Did he make them grovel and beg and beg him to save their lives? Did he put them in prison? Did he have them killed? What did Joseph do? That's right. He forgave them. He didn't hold any of that stuff against them. That is a good point to remember today. 
You guys can do that too. Hi, it's Pastor Chip again, and I have a question for you out of our call to action lesson we did today. Are you ready? Here it is. Holding on to blank only hurts you. What's the answer? That's right. Great job. Holding on to anger only hurts you. Okay, I have another question for you. Are you ready? Here it is. God blank you, so you must forgive others. Do you know the answer? You are so smart. Great job. God forgave you, so you must forgive others. Awesome job. Okay, guys. Where was today's power verse found? That's right. It was Matthew 5, 21 and 22. Let's say it together. You have heard that if you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. Matthew 5, 21 and 22. Guys, this is so important of a verse for us to learn because as we grow in age and life, things will hit us in all kinds of ways. Many of us can feel very right for holding a grudge or not forgiving somebody. Let's be clear. Forgiving doesn't mean you forget the pain that someone caused you. It doesn't mean you forget what happened. It means that you trust God more than your pain. And you trust when Jesus says to love one another, even your enemies, that you can do that because you trust Jesus. Jesus forgave us. We can forgive others. Guys, thanks for being with us today. We love you at Life Church. We're glad to be back with you. Remember, we have services uh, Sunday mornings now, and we're having family church at each one of our campuses at um, Fishers and at Eagle Creek. Our services are at 9 and 11, and at Noblesville, our service is at 10. So we would love to see you there. Make sure you check in with your, um, with your children's pastor when you get there. Make sure you see us because we want to see you. We miss you all so much and are really glad to be back together again. Keep watching here though. We're gonna keep doing these videos. Sound good? Let us know if you like it.